Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're talking about a weird annotation that is correct in the MyPy type system, and we're gonna explain why it is that way. Um, just to show you that it works before we even jump into it, x float, oops, lowercase float, equals false. Um, and actually, I'm gonna show you another one, a more, even more absurd one later. Uh, not implemented. Uh, these two both type check and, and are valid according to MyPy and the PEP 484 type system. Uh, and these are both technically not correct at runtime. Now let me just show you that really quick. So if we do Python, we do is instance uh, false of float. This is false. And if we do is instance not implemented of float, that's also false. So just, just to clear up before, I, I can already see the comments, oh, the Python Titan system sucks. This is completely garbage. This isn't true. Yeah, no, it's, it's actually not true at runtime, but uh, this is an important side effect of how Python's type system is implemented. And these are two conveniences to make it much more reasonable to write types. All right, so the first of those actually comes from, oh, we're jumping ahead here. Uh, it comes from PEP 484 itself, the, the PEP that said this is type hints, this is how they work. Uh, and the first of these, the I don't know, float being false here, has to do with the numeric tower as it is described, um, the way that numbers are represented in Python's type system. And basically what this says, you know, with all of these words, is that uh, instead of handling a bunch of different types and trying to worry about all of the abstract base classes, which don't really sort of work, uh, is to only handle things as built-in types and to just say that floats also include integers. Um, and so that's kind of this, this magic here. Well, I guess that's only the first part of that. That would be if I said x float equals one, but we actually have x float equals false. A different letter so that it doesn't <laughs> cause an error. We actually have x float equals false. Uh, so this this first jump, you know, this is this is the part that the type system sort of made up here in that uh, integers are floats. And of course, if we look at the the types here, is instance one float. This is also false, but this is kind of a convenience for the type system. Okay. So anytime you see float in the Python type system, it also includes integers. Uh, it isn't the other way around though. So if you say int, it is must always be an int, um, despite them not actually being sub subtypes. Um, and uh, the second jump of this is that booleans are integers. This is actually true at uh, at runtime. So booleans in in Python are integers, and this this goes back to the original pep which implemented booleans and. Uh, it was supposed to be convenience for the C API, and Guido didn't want strict bools or you know those all those terrible languages that don't let truthy and faulty and blah 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 blah. I actually like strict bools, but that makes it a lot easier. Anyway, um, Python doesn't have strict bools; they're a subclass of int, and so you know if you do false plus false, you get zero. If you do false you know, true plus true, you get tr you get two. Oh, can't get a tongue twister right there. Because um, Booleans in, in Python are, are actually just integers. So that's sort of the second jump here, which is how we get to here. So ints are floats and bools are ints. So transitively, bools are floats. Um, but how do we get to this last jump here? Not implemented doesn't come into here at all. Uh, not implemented is just this class. It doesn't have any... Uh, what is it, bases? No, it's an instance. Type not implemented dot bases. Did you mean double under class? I did. Yeah, this is just a sort of unrelated type. It doesn't implement any, implement any of the math operations. It's not a number at all. But, uh, and I actually did a video on this. I did two videos on this. One where it compares it with non-implemented error and one where uh, it explains why this is a subclass of bool. The reason for this is, again, another convenience in the type system, where if you're defining comparison methods on a class, so if you have a class and you're implementing less than, typically you would implement this as um, other object returning bool. However, if you've written a rich comparison in Python, you'll know that if you can't possibly compare the other type, 
you're supposed to return not implemented. And so you would say like, I don't know, if not is instance other C, return not implemented. Uh, otherwise, let's say this had, for sake of discussion, x int none self dot x equals x. I don't know, otherwise return self dot x less than other dot x. Um, so you, you return not implemented in the case where it's something that's not comparable. Uh, and then at runtime, the, the, the runtime can say like, uh, we don't have any comparison for this and raise an error. So you run this, you'll see like, oh, shoot. Uh, type error not supported between those two instances. And what happened here is it actually called less than on C. It might have also called it on int and both of those returned not implemented, and so it, it produced that type error. But because of this, you got kind of a wart in your type system. Like, do you make people write arrow bool here, or do you make people explicitly write or type uh, not implemented? Oh, I guess you would do not implemented type. I don't even know where you would get a reference to this either. Like this would be the more correct way to do this, but it's so inconvenient. And so what, what the type system says is that not implemented is a subclass of bool. That's sort of the, the cheat code that makes this work. Uh, now technically you can implement, I don't know if less than is one of the ones you can implement, but some of the uh, comparison methods you can actually make return different classes. I know for instance, NumPy does things like uh, self, I don't know, other object. Uh, and can often return like its own type, so you know, the self type here. Uh, you don't have to return a boolean from equals, and so maybe that's another reason why not implemented is convenient in that way, in that like you don't have to additionally say when it's not comparable, um, because this isn't always a boolean. Um, but it is, I don't know, con convenient in that way. But anyway, that kind of explains these two wild annotations here and, and why they look wrong and they don't really work at runtime, but they are part of the type system. Now, I did want to say one other thing about this particular one here, or I guess more specifically this float and integer one here, since I think that's the most contentious part of this and that like floats and ints are, are separate types and probably should be separate in the type system, um, but a decision made long ago makes them the same and it would be really hard to undo that now so what python has sort of been doing is trying to make float and integer types more similar uh, so that they don't crash at runtime in cases where like you would access for instance before python 3.12 if you accessed uh oops no i didn't want to do that uh if you did i don't know 1.5 dot as integer ratio uh, this works on floats but if you did one one dot as integer ratio, this would crash. Oh, wait, 310. Oh, added in 38. Okay, so is integer <laughs> is the one I wanted to explain here. So this is an attribute error, uh, but in 312, they added this back to integers, even though is integer for integer, obviously always true. Uh, and the reason for that is you could write a function in the type system that would look like this, uh, x floats bool return x dot is integer. And this would type check and it would, it would look fine uh, if you passed you know, F1 here. But it would crash at runtime in, old, in Python versions older than 3.12 because this is only on floats and not in integers. There is no way to safely type uh, functions which used attributes that were only on floats. And so what they did was I think a good compromise here in that it just implements these functions in, in sort of, I guess, a silly way. It's always <laughs> itself and one and always true, uh, such that these functions are the same as floats. And so uh, it makes it makes this the, the code a little bit safer as well as you know, kind of reinforces this weird type system of ints and floats being separate. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show today. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.